one of the common mistakes when people hear about Ho'oponopono is they think they need to say it to what they think is the problem. They focus on something. And in Ho'oponopono, those things don't actually exist. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Who are you addressing? You are not <laughs> addressing the feelings. You are not addressing the other person. You are only addressing the whiteboard. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. So that you can keep cleaning what you're perceiving to be the problem. What you're doing here is cleaning your own vision. You don't have to know what the belief is. You don't have to know what the block is. You do know there's one because you feel it. As you feel it, you pretend you're talking to your connection to the universe. This is your private prayer or petition, your communication inside yourself to whatever you feel, whatever you call the being that gave you life. It's the greater higher power. This morning when I looked at my blog, somebody had posted a comment that said they were very skeptical about Zero Limits, the book, and saying something as simple as, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. But they were laying in bed and there was a lot of noise going outside and they apparently were in an apartment and it was very noisy outside with a party going on and so forth. And they decided they would just try it. And so they laid in bed saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and so forth. And they said almost instantly, the party stopped. <laughs> the noise stopped and she went to bed and she went to sleep. I wanted to point out first the simplicity of this and then second, something I think is very important. You're not doing the cleaning to get something. You're doing the cleaning to clean. You're not doing the cleaning to get a particular result because if you're trying to get a particular result, you're still in the world of the data, of the ego, of, uh, of intention, of trying to control everything from your little itsy bitsy conscious, conscious mind. What you're trying to do is erase, constantly erase, constantly erasing so that what you do receive is inspiration. Then when the inspiration comes, there's a purity to that, that is coming from zero, that is coming from the divine, and that's what you step into. I keep referring back to this TV show thing, and I want you to realize that I'm not making it happen. I am not trying. I am cleaning. And as I'm cleaning, things happen. But I'm not trying to make them happen. Somebody asked me yesterday about all the things that I do, that I'm an incredibly prolific writer. I'm pretty much the book of the month club now. Almost every month I have a new book coming out. There's probably more books coming out than most people have read since high school. You know, and they can't keep up with it. And I have people who are fans of mine who are on my mailing list who try to keep up, who complain, you write too much. I can't buy all of your books. I can't read all of your books. I can't read all of your blog posts. And they think that I'm just doing a whole lot of effort. <clears throat> I'm doing a whole lot of struggle. But what's really happening is it's play. It's an effortless activity and this is what happens when you come from inspiration when you just keep cleaning and the divine says something like write this book Joe or whatever it happens to be it's easy for me to do it now when you look at me doing it it may seem like intense effort because you're trying to imagine what it would be like for you to do it but when I do it it's natural for me it's much like you with your sonnet over there I don't want to have to go and memorize it. I don't want to have to go and perform it. That's not my inspiration. It might be at one day. It might be at one point. As I keep cleaning, I might wake up one day and I'll have the inspiration to go pull something out of one of my favorite books and to memorize it and to actually turn it into a the theatrical uh, experience. But until that happens, it'll feel like work to me because it won't be natural. The cleaning was to be done so he or she would be okay with the moment. And out of that moment, he or she may have been inspired to do something else. Like because of the noise, get up and write a poetry. Or to work out a business plan. Or to go for a walk. Or a run. I don't know. It could have been any number of things. So you're cleaning to clean. Ho'oponopono. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. If you haven't heard of it, brace yourself, because it's the most powerful, the most transformational, the most magical, the most miraculous technique I've ever come across. 
I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. I've written 80 books. I've recorded 15 albums. I have 200 some products. I have a coaching program, certification programs, but nothing ever has had the impact in my life as Ho'oponopono has. I've been teaching it to other people since around 2005. There is great depth to it, though it's very simple. On the very superficial level, there's really only four phrases and you're kind of saying them as a quiet prayer or petition. But there's so much more to it than that. And what I really want you to do is check it out. I want you to check it out for you, your family, your friends, and ultimately for the world. It's that powerful. And as I like to say, expect miracles.